All right, let's talk numbers. Uh, he's ranked 255, number 255 on Forbes' list of the world's richest billionaires. She was widely regarded as Hollywood's first perfect 10. That, of course, thanks to this. The movie 10, big comedy from the late 70s. Sir. Uh... But the numbers that concern them are these the declining polar bear population, and the one-third of the open ocean shark species currently threatened with extinction. So actress Bo Derek and the rebel billionaire Richard Branson have teamed up with Wild Aid. Wild Aid's an organization that wants to end the illegal trade in wildlife. It's a campaign for the hundreds of polar bears living in northern Ontario that they say are currently threatened by the loss of Arctic ice. The other creature on their list is the shark, as tens of millions of sharks are killed every year for their fins. We're not asking a lot. No one's going to suffer that much from not eating a bowl of soup occasionally. Now, speaking out on global issues is nothing new to an activist entrepreneur like Mr. Branson. Along with running his business empire, he has spearheaded many social initiatives on homelessness, poverty, peace, and renewable energy. But what about Bo? How'd she go from this? Is that for me? No, son, that's for me. She's like a 10. Hi, honey. A reigning Hollywood sex symbol and actress to an animal welfare advocate. Well, we're gonna find out her story. We'll also find out if legislation is the best way to protect at-risk animals already threatened by issues like climate change and poverty. And also, with so many good causes, many of them backed by Richard himself, how do you deal with donor fatigue? Everyone, please welcome Bo Derek. Yes. Hello, lady. Hey. How are you? I'm good. Nice Thank to see you. you. Thanks, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, it's great to be here. Be fun. So, from Tarzan to animal welfare activist, that's, that's, that's what, I mean. I guess it's a natural. It I never natural. thought about that, but I guess so. I mean, just I mean, tell me what you're doing here. This is a really, it's an interesting fight that you've been in. Yeah, it's, um, I've been involved with this group called Wild Aid for 10 years, and they do this incredible job in wildlife conservation. Um, very pragmatic, highly effective. When did you first become connected to this? To Wild Aid, well, just particular, the, well, just Wild Aid, I was, in, I was in Galapagos Islands 10 years ago, and I thought, oh, here I am in the most pristine, wonderful place. Well, poaching was out of control. There's just no way to physically patrol. What were you doing patrol, there? Visiting the tourists, yeah. like most people. And uh, then finding out of the poaching, and it, it all seemed hopeless. And uh, the director of Wild Aid was on the boat and started telling me about this approach where you take popular icons, celebrities. Um, they had Jackie Chan as an ambassador, and they had this huge um, advertising campaign with him throughout Asia. And the idea that you can have a law to ban, say, far shark fin for shark fin soup, but how effective is that ever going to be? It's like the drug war. As long as somebody wants it, someone will sell it, someone will, will fin a shark for it. But when Jackie Chan says, hey, this is not cool anymore, yeah. I think it's so effective. Yeah, because he'll kick somebody's ass. He'll kick somebody's ass yeah. and everybody adores him. Yeah. <laughs> and so now Wild Aid has grown so big and, uh, and now there's this, this huge campaign with Leonardo DiCaprio and Sir Richard Branson and, and Yao Ming and they're reaching a billion people a week. Right. That's powerful. But just the idea of celebrities I know. Shining attention. I mean, I, I think. Look, I think it's amazing. I think you have to do something. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a little concerned that we put so much power in the hands of our celebrities. Having been one, I didn't deserve it. But well, you say that past tense. <laughs> yeah, but I, but at the same time, go for it. Use it. It's, it's, it is a powerful thing. It's, it's what our society is interested in right now. So I think a lot of this conversation is cultural because if you talk about. A lot of the stuff used for Chinese medicine, and of course, mm -hmm. you know, whales you hear a lot about in the conversation with Japan. Mm -hmm. is, is a lot of this about just the cultural differences? Because there are lots of parts of the world that look at the way people in the West treat cows. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And I'm, I'm trying, I don't want to judge culture. Someone explained to it to me that when you ask um, Asian people not to have shark fin soup at a wedding, it's like asking Americans not to have turkey mm. at Thanksgiving. So that helps you understand. And so how do you pick what... You, how, how to approach this? You know, I don't, I get a lot of credit for being this activist. I just, I happened to be on a boat in the Galapagos, met Pete mm -hmm. Knights, and I was just, I was so amazed at, at his solution and believed in what he was doing. He asked me to help, so it's, it's as simple as that. It's gotta be interesting, I guess kind of a, a great opportunity for you too, because it helps find that next stage of what your career is gonna be. Do you find a different identity in doing this, being about something like this? I'm always up for an adventure, 
an education in something new. I, I, if there's an interesting door open, I've, I'll always go through it. So it's just been a blessing in my life, all of this. What were you like when a lot of the attention went away from you? Uh, fine, I'm still yeah. fine. It's a hat you wear for the rest of your life, but I love the privacy I have now. Is it a hat that's just comfortably, though? For me, it's always been comfortable because really? I never wanted it. I never it, wanted to be famous. I never wanted to be a movie star. It's yeah, been so, a well, gift. That's true, and a lot of those photographs that became so iconic were just you taking photographs, right? It wasn't a part of a larger plan for you, was it? No, never, never. You become famous first if you're an actor. You become famous playing a part. Um, people really don't, well, in the old days, they didn't get to know you. Privacy was something you treasured. Now, yeah. it seems you're just putting yourself out there. I don't know why. It's crazy to me not imagine? to have a private life. It, those iconic photos of you are, are, are just that, right? When you, do you yeah. accidentally come by them every now and then and just go, oh, my God? I guess there is something to what you're saying that... I'm just now being able to look back and say, I guess there was, I guess that's why it caused so much attention and, and such a, fir why everything went crazy in my life. Because it was kind of unique, the look of whatever she was back then. <laughs> you see the Will Ferrell picture of you and him, of him? <laughs> can we show this? I thought, okay, I can there die now. So. <laughs> I can die now and go to heaven because... That, there's some kind of great honor in that. <laughs> it's a fantastic... Isn't there? It means you've reached something. That's right. <laughs> that to me is really important because I, I adore Will Ferrell. Nice. Uh, our support mentioned uh, Richard Branson. Sir Richard, uh, who's uh, been a great guest on this show before, is going to join us right after the break. You don't want to miss it. Bowen Richard, right after this. <laughs> Why, I'm Richard Bronson, that's why. Oh, I'm running away from a train. Better go hide out in a French discotheque. Now, this is more like it. And I'll tell you a secret. I'm not a virgin. That's so funny. It's awesome, right? So we're back here with Bo Derek. Now, in the commercial break, Bo and I got into the studio and built a bigger chair. So we can welcome the man that was being honored in that or spoofed in that piece. Please welcome back to the show, Sir Richard Branson. Yay! Good to see you, man. How are you? Thank welcome. You. Ooh, how did you get caught up in this? Oh, um, well, I've uh, gone to Africa ever since I was a child. Um, uh, done quite a lot of work in Africa in trying to protect things like... Uh, the rhino um, and uh, other species there, trying to give, get you know more land land set aside for for um, uh, the wildlife and um, and it's just uh, uh, you know they're, they're just these beautiful animals that are in peril all over the world and um, it, and if I think if, if you're in a position to try to make sure that we can protect them, uh, we should. So we're we're we're, um, we're doing our best. <laughs> <laughs> Does it feel like it's a, it's a battle that one can that can be won? Um, I think uh, I think some of the battles can be won, um, uh, but it does need politicians to help. Um, and you know, so I mean, let's, let's just take sharks. I mean, one, you know, one and a half million every week being being decimated, and, and most of these sharks are completely, you know, harmless individuals. You can swim with them. Um, uh, you know, uh, the hammerhead sharks, uh, whale sharks, and so on. And, and uh, and they're just being dragged out of the water. The fins are being cut off. They're being thrown back in alive to die. And, you know, this is the oldest species on Earth which is in danger of disappearing. Um, and it's got completely out of control now that Chinese people have got money. Um, and um, so if a country like Canada could just simply say, you know, the one, one bowl of soup uh, we, we, we will not allow in Canada, um, like, you know, like Toronto have done, which is fantastic, but if the whole of Canada could, to, could do that, it just sets a fantastic example to the rest of the world. Um, and um, so that's, you know, that's one, what we're trying to do, is see if we can push the federal government. 
Bo and I were talking about how you went with Yao Ming. She talked about the impact Jackie Chan had. Talk about the impact Yao Ming can have in China. Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, we, 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 we held a big press conference in, in Shanghai. Um, and, One of the most um, famous basketball players in the world, right? Yeah. Playing in America. Yeah, I had to stand on you know a stool, <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, you know, but he's you know, I mean, they don't have a god in China. He is he is you know to most Chinese people the, the equivalent of of, of God, and um, so to have somebody like that. Uh, you know, telling people not to do it um, is fantastic. One of the complex natures of this conversation is just the idea of poverty, right? Because tigers get hunted illegally, poachers do it because there's poverty. And for some, there's a business in this. And so is, is it about kind of getting the awareness out about the interconnectedness of the problems? It's not just, you know, saving just the tiger. It's bigger than just the tiger. Yeah, but I don't think we've got time to sort of sort out poverty in order to save. I mean, there's only 1,500 tigers left in India, um, uh, and uh, and that 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 means really urgent action. So, um, and uh, so you know, wild data are you know working with the community around around the tiger parks and in trying to involve them more in the parks and um, trying to get them to. Uh, realize the benefits to, to you know, and, and trying to actually actually get benefits from keeping the tigers alive rather than killing them. Yeah, you think there's any element of fatigue out there, donor fatigue in a sense with people of just there's so the world is in such a state. There's lots of good, but there's fatigue too, isn't there? Yeah, I mean the, it, it's a very good question. I mean when when, uh, when um, Wild Aid mentioned that we weren't going to just be doing sharks, but also the polar bears when we came to Canada. You know, I thought, uh, you know, I, I wonder whether that's one step too far. But then, having looked at it, um, uh, the, you know, polar bear is Canada's symbol. I mean, bet, more better than I think the maple leaf. I mean, it's the most w w wonderful, beautiful creature which I've had the privilege of coming across on a on a on, a, on, a, on an Arctic crossing. You're the kind of guy that would wrestle him. Did you? <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. 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 I think I, I won't respect the. You respect your polar bears enormously. <laughs> that's right. And. and you know, if, if there's just little ways, and that's all that's all, the, all this bill that we're trying to get passed yeah. does, um, to make sure that they're going to be around for many generations to come, it's not going to cost you know almost any money at all, um, then might as well try to push it through. Well, again, I guess it's the same problem with addressing poverty. Polar bears are directly tied to climate change, and how you get people to pay attention to climate change. Yep, and, that, and that's a bigger, that's certainly a bigger problem. And, <laughs> and um, you know, we, I mean, I think. I mean, a lot of people are working on it. We're working quite as hard as we can on it, and um, I mean, you know, trying to come up with alternative fuels that can be used in airplanes rather than you know the, the, the fuels that actually pollute the atmosphere. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think you know there are breakthroughs happening, and we just have to hope that we can make sure they happen in time. You've been on it for a while because part of your business is about trains and you know planes and all that. And are you, are, do you see real progress coming in alternative fuels? Yeah. I mean, you know, for instance, there's a company that we're involved in called Lancetec, which is was was a brilliant idea of a, of a, of a British engineer, and um, and basically, you know, he's worked out that he can take the the, the the rubbish that goes up aluminium plants out of the chimneys and steel plants out of the chimneys, refunnel that and turn that into aviation fuel. Um, so. The, the best kind of recycling you can imagine, and and it works. So we, we hope to be powering all our planes on on um, the shit that goes out of uh, chim well, Listen, if, I mean, if and, and I better I'll fly on it first. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listen, because and you better get the intergalactic business up quickly because if this doesn't work, we're going to need to go somewhere. Oh, well, all right. Well, well, that's true. We'll we'll um, yeah we'll find it. We'll find a place for, for um, <laughs> all all our families to go somewhere on a, some other planet. <laughs> How do you get the politicians to pay attention to this now? They have economic realities they have to deal with, and and that's what they tell us anyway that this is about. That. Well, it's not. It, it, it's not an economic. Uh, I mean. You know, if you go into a Chinese menu in, in a restaurant, there's hundreds of choices. Just take that one bit of soup off, and you can save, uh, you know, millions and millions of sharks. And so, and it's not going to cost. You know, I mean, the restaurants, okay, they charge a bit more for weddings for for a shark fin soup, but on, honestly, it's, they're, 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 you know, they, they can replace it. There are even, even shark fin soup lookalikes, which they would you wouldn't you'd hardly notice the difference in the taste. So. And so, you know, um, Toronto have done it. What, why can't the federal government do it for the whole of Canada? The organization is Wild Aid. WildAid.org is the website. You can get more information. Bo Derek and Sir Richard Branson, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.